job to do. You gotta get the word out to Plymouth Salesman. Plymouth and Valiant really rate where it counts against competition. You've got the proof. You've seen the specs, catalogs, features. You've seen the cars now. You know Plymouth and Valiant are top value in their class. The words and numbers on paper or code. Not exciting enough. Don't really get across what a great year this can be. Gotta help them find out how big 1963 advantages over competition can put extra dollars in their pockets. How do you help them cash in? Idea. Great. Need help, though. Get some of the other guys to lend their hand. You call in Howard Cullen. Dick Cook. They like the idea. You yeah, kick it around. You're fine. Iron out the detail. You set it up. Name the day. And a few mornings later, you're ready to go. The idea? You're going to give these 1963 cars, all the major competitors in Plymouth and Valiant, a real going over. Find the things that don't show up in the statistics and the charts and the specs. Give them all a critical look from a prospect's eye view. And then you're going to report the facts to the salesman. Give them the straight dope on how their Plymouth and Valiant stack up against what the guy down the street is selling with movies and pictures to show them you know what you're talking about. You pick the major competition against Plymouth, Chevrolet Impala, Ford Galaxy. And, well, you hesitated some about this one. It doesn't really stack up in size or features, but it's priced right up there, so you included it, fairly. And you figure you'll get the district manager to give salesmen a full-scale report on that Plymouth Fairlane price situation in the meeting. Then, you take a deep breath and start with a long look, a prospect's look. Forget you with Plymouth. If you're not honest now, you may as well quit. So you look, and one thing hits you right between the eyes. Brother, it ain't 1962. Suddenly that jingle Plymouth's on the move is running through your head. And you're beginning to get a warm feeling about your car. No matter where you look, it all adds up to just one answer. This year, Plymouth's with you. You start collecting images. You begin to get clear patterns. And you like what you see. Any way you look at it. Front or rear? It's Plymouth with the new look. The only one of the whole shooting match that you can tell from its 1962 counterpart without a program. But it's clean new. Uncomplicated new. You know people are going to like its lines. You begin to notice details that show there's more value built into Plymouth. Like airfoil windshield wipers that keep blades tight to the glass. Keep them working even when you're barreling along at 90 in a windstorm. Plymouth's got it. Impala has it. Neither has Galaxy. And neither has Fairlane. Dick notices something about the Fairlane trunk and you check it out. He tough to get something heavy up over that sill. You remember a gag you heard once. Hernia high. You decide you better not use it. Plymouth's trunk sill is low and wide for really easy loading. And while you're on this trunk kick, you notice how deep and big Plymouth's trunk looks compared to Galaxy and Fairlane. You know that doesn't jive with the statistics. They give four a slight edge in cubic feet. You find the difference quick. Galaxy space is there, but it's really spread out. So flat you can't stand up even a small suitcase in it and then close the lid. You begin to find other things. Small things maybe, but all good sales ammunition. Like the fact that you get only one rear door check in a Galaxy or Fairlane. Likewise in Pallet. And you know that makes a showroom plus for you with Plymouth's two position door checks all around. Again, more value. Somebody rolls down the rear window of the Chevrolet and you file a mental picture of what that does for exterior appearance. Plymouth's window, of course, goes all the way down. Keeps the car's styling lines intact. And while you're taking a close look with the window down, you catch another visible value difference. Just look at the rough trim edge in that Impala window compared with the quality built Plymouth. Well, you're pretty happy with how we measure up on the outside, so you move to the interiors. You keep on being 
satisfied. You make a note to show salesmen these interiors side by side. Let them make the same judgment you did about who's going to be hotter than a $2 pistol in 1963. Plymouth going away. Space? Pretty much a toss-up. But Plymouth doesn't take a back seat in this area either. And that's a pun. We're equal in most dimensions, a little bigger in some. You know Plymouth's narrower, easier to climb over door sills. And you remember that, again in 1963, only Plymouth of these three has solid unibody construction. Tight, quiet, rugged. Impala and Galaxy are still body on frame. Important thing to explain to prospects. You find your attention caught by some of the little things that make the big value differences. Like the fact that Plymouth door lock buttons are sparkling chrome. Galaxy and Impala both have painted ones. Like the fact that only Plymouth of the three has the luxury car touch of rollover seat bolsters. You check out footroom. Up front, Plymouth's new transmission design shows up in a lower hump. More room. And you note on the side that contour carpeting in Plymouth fits like the skin on a banana. Ford's looks a little untidy by comparison. You plant your number 10s in the back seat of each car, too. And remind yourself to show the salesman that extra footroom in Plymouth. You compare instrument panels. Please to notice that Plymouth has real convenience and luxury. Like that safety pattern. And Plymouth has easy to reach push button control. Gauges for temperature, amps that tell you more than just the fact you're already in trouble. That's what you get in Chevrolet. Don't use the term idiot bites. Let's just say they're not as accurate as Plymouth's gauges. Incidentally, notice how bare that Impala instrument panel looks without the optional safety pattern. You check forward and fairly. Optional safety padding. Lights for battery discharge that tell you when you've got a problem, not when you're getting one. And that light mark gen reminds you too that both Fairlane and Galaxy still have a generator. Plymouth has a better than ever alternator that saves the battery. And Pala has followed Plymouth on that feature this year. You look at the heater control and the phrase weather jet comes into your mind. You remember that Plymouth gives buyers the extra value of a blower that moves air faster with the car standing still and most systems do at 30 miles per hour. You notice a lot of little differences. Not much, one by one, but important indicators of overall value. For instance, you get better protection from sun visors in a Plymouth than in an Impala because they're closer together. You get a wider brake pedal in a Plymouth, six and a half inches to Impala and Galaxy's five inches. Makes left foot braking and automatic transmission models easier and safer. You notice things like this. Chevrolet. Galaxy. Plymouth. The difference? Plymouth's thick blanket of roof insulation. Ford and Chevrolet have a gun. Here's a value difference that shows up like the whole dime and makes a great showroom demonstration. Plymouth, and only Plymouth, in the Highline models, has this convenient pull-down armrest between driver and front seat passenger. A luxury touch that gives Plymouth Fury a big car look. Yes, as they stand there, you figure you've got a great story to tell salesmen. More than you can cover in a short time with salesmen. You hope they'll check the cars for themselves. But a car isn't just a look at, it's a functional machine. So the next step is to get these cars out on the road and see how Plymouth stacks up against Ford and Chevrolet with the performance chips down. You decide you'll each drive each car, and then pool your impressions to pass along to salesmen. You kick them over and take off, not really knowing what to expect. You find out. You find out that Plymouth backs up its good looks with the best performance it's ever had. And that means the best performance in its price class. Your test cars happen to be standard V8s, and while you don't try any hot rod stuff, every one of you gets the same impression driving these cars. Those big 230 Plymouth horses come through on the road when you compare with Galaxy's 164 and Chevrolet's 195. You stop at a designated spot and check acceleration from a stop. No contest. Plymouth jumps away like a scalded cat. Chevy's not bad, but not as good. Ford? Well, let's not be nasty, but it feels pretty sluggish to you by comparison. You figure part of the reason is that smooth, three-speed automatic torque flight transmission. You figure that the sixes would be closer together, but with Plymouth still holding an edge. A bit more horsepower, 140 
135, the Chevy's 140, Galaxy's 138, and Fairlane's pretty tame 101. And the big advantage of Torque Flight 6 transmission. How about ride? Well, you have to be honest about it. On the smooth road, pay your money and take your choice. They're all good. Smooth, vibration-free, comfortable. Then you give them the test. You find a good bump and hit it going fast, and the differences begin to show up. You know what to expect of Plymouth's torsion air, and it delivers the goods again. Better than ever this year for ironing out the rough spots, settling down fast after a jolt. In pallet? Well, you've almost forgotten how soft an all-coil suspension is. Ford's better. Watch you come out of the whole deal feeling that the automotive experts are right, and they rate torsion air the best suspension going for a passenger car. It shows up again, too, when you give them all the stop tests. Besides, the better stops you get, smoother, surer, straighter with plenty, you notice that there's very little dip. And when you start up again, no squat. Not true with Impala. You stop fine, sure, nothing unsafe about it. But you can tell Plymouth brakes are bigger. And then Impala gives you more dip when you stop. And more squat when you take off. Coils in the rear. Galaxy and Fairlane, not bad. They have leaf springs in the rear, too, but they're not up to Plymouth for smooth stops and starts. So you really ring them up. Competitor, then Plymouth, then competitor again. And you honestly come away from the experience feeling that you've got the better car. Plymouth, for 1963. Not big differences. The other guy builds a pretty good car, too. But important differences. And enough of them so that you know salesmen can prove Plymouth's a better buy. So far, so good. But what about compacts? Valiant, Falcon, Chevy 2. That's the next job. Same kind of bumper-to-bumper -bumper and bump-to-bump -bump check on how we look against our top competition in that big compact market. The starting point's the same. A critical, objective, prospect's eye view of them as they stand in the showroom. You know you won't have to say much. Best all-around compact anybody's come up with yet. You picture them as the prospect will remember them. And you can't help thinking that from the front, from the side, from the rear, Valiant stands out in this company as the one new, fresh 1963 style car. The fact is, neither Falcon nor Chevy 2 has been changed much since they were introduced. And that's four years for Falcon. You move in now and start to look for the details that make the differences. The things that may be little in themselves, but that add up to value in sales, if you know about them and use them. Howard thinks Falcon's tires look smaller, for instance, and he's right. You check them all, and you find out that Valiant has 650-13 tires. Falcon? 613. Chevy 2 is the same. 613. Result? Just has to be a better ride. Better traction for Valiant with more rubber on the road. You start looking under the skin now, and you know some of the things you think salesmen will want to hear about. You note that only Valiant of the three has airfoil wipers that stay on the glass even at high speed. Safe. You check out the trunks and find some interesting dope to pass along. You find, for instance, that although the trunks of the Valiant, Chevy 2, and Falcon are about the same size, Valiant has more usable space because only Valiant has its spare tire tucked away under the trunk floor to give you wide, flat, unobstructed load space. And you're surprised to find out that the floor of the trunk in the Falcon is the top of the gas tank. You wince a little as you remember the last time you got caught across the back of the legs by a swinging car door. You find out that neither Chevy 2 nor Falcon has the convenience and safety of Valiant's two-position door check. When you're satisfied with the outside look, you move on to the inside look, and you come up with another good story for sales. Interior styling, a matter of taste, of course, but for your dough, it's value. That program of upgrading Valiant Interiors Frank Walter told you about really shows up when you give it the side-by-side. -side. For space, not much difference. You have to admit Chevy 2 and Falcon have just as much interior room as we have. Check this stuff. Up front, Valiant's lighter, more compact transmission means more space for people. You notice, too, up here where it counts, how much better Valiant's contoured carpeting fits. 
Instrument panels? Check. Valued all the way. For high style and for convenience. That in push buttons, of course, and gauges that tell you what's going on down there in the engine compartment instead of warning lights that only work when there's trouble. Which brings up the point that Valiant gives you the battery saving alternator. Chevy 2 has followed Valiant's lead with an alternator for 1963. The Falcon still has the gearing. Who knows the moon things too? Like how tough it is to open the vent pane on the Falcon. No such problem in a Valiant. You know it's true that the shift lever on the Falcon is mighty close to the wheel. And when you're shifting to reverse, you have to watch it yourself or... You're happy to deal with one of last year's problems has been met with good. Inside door handles on Valiant are screwed on with spread. Apple and Chevy 2 still use those clips that sometimes leave you with the handle in your head and that silly wind. You try to not black hat on the head bombers again and it's the same story. Falcon and Chevy 2? Valiant. You get a flat air mode roastful ride in a van with a thick roof insulation. Well, some of those things are small and unimportant by themselves. But they add up to comfort, convenience, a better buy for your customer. You figure this four yeah. call. Yeah. Well, then we'll find it where we use them. Okay, let's give them the action test now. You go through the ground rules again, every man drives every car, and you're hardly on the road before you begin to see the big differences in performance. You're driving Falcon, and all of a sudden you're losing the group as they accelerate. You trap down hard on it, but nothing much happens. You wonder if you've got a cold one. But you remember that Falcon Standard 6 is only good for 85 horsepower, and you begin to see what it means. You remember the price on that window sticker. You wonder how they can ask more for this car than you get for your battery. Chevy 2 keeps up a little better. You recall that you've got 90 horsepower in this one, but you really start to appreciate valiant liveliness when you drive them all. And you appreciate again the smooth, efficient delivery of that power through the only three-speed transmission in the business specifically designed for a six, short flight six. You check out ride with the bump test. And well, what's new? It's torsion air again. Those coils up front in Falcon and Chevy 2 are just more match with smooth ride, fast recovery. Torsion air is a carryover feature of the shooter. But you make a note for hit it hard for sale. It's still one of our strongest, easiest to demonstrate sales points. It doesn't take you long on the road to make up your mind that Valiant's still the king of the compacts. The liveliest, best riding, smoothest going, easiest handling compact car on the road. You've got a real good feeling you should swing back into the parking area for the last stop and turn off the ignition. You're satisfied yourself, and you think you can satisfy Plymouth and Valiant salesmen across the country. But this is going to be the year for Plymouth Valiant. You check the cars that we compete against from stem to stern. You've looked, poked, prodded, driven over every kind of road at every speed. And you come up with an inescapable conclusion. A conclusion that can mean dollars and cents for every salesman who handles the Plymouth Valiant line. That Plymouth and Valiant have the looks, the engineering, the features, the performance, the dependability, the safety, the space and comfort, the price, in short, everything the car buyer is looking for, and in greater measure than any competitor. You know they'll take it.